there's a bit of a stigma of doing something like that, like the, the quick and easy way, like it's more efficient and it's probably a better way to do it. But there is always like those kids in your class that are really good at drawing hands or really good at drawing people. And if you tell them that you used an underlay for it, they'll give you a weird look. I feel like it's kind of the opposite here. Like if I tell someone that I used an underlay and I saved an hour doing it and I got like some efficiency back and I saved some time, like good on you. Hello and welcome to the 52 Launch Podcast. My name's Chapin. My name's Ethan. And we are two interns here at 52 Launch. Uh, we're both juniors studying product design. I'm at the University of Minnesota. I'm at Wentworth and we call industrial design. Already sounds so much cooler. That does sound pretty cool. That does sound pretty cool. I wonder what your experience is at your school. Um, personally, I know like when I was looking at different schools, one of the big things that stuck out to me that I thought was going to be really cool that ended up being a big pain was like the math science requirements. Uh, at my school, the University of Minnesota, we have to take some math classes some physics classes and some stuff like that because they want us to graduate with all sorts of knowledge in different fields so we can go into you you know, kind of whatever we want. A well-rounded student. Yeah, exactly. Um, or at least that's the theory. So that was, that was a challenge for me in school freshman year, having all these gen eds and things that I wasn't expecting to need to know or don't have a, a great background in. I don't know if you have that kind of thing at Wentworth. No, oh, at Wentworth, it was very lucky. Like, we pretty much, like, jumped into ID. Like, we had our studio classes, our drawing classes, and we had some gen eds. We have English, obviously, and yeah. we had to take geometry. It was a high-level geometry class. You really? Know? Definitely all the engineer kids I roomed with had to do their calc to and everything. I'm out here failing geometry. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I definitely know how you feel. I had to... I had to take uh, Calc 2 at a community college and transfer my credits because I, I could not do it. Yeah, I'm not a very mathy guy, but... Uh, That's the good thing about industrial design because all you really need is drawing skills, CAD renderings, and you don't have to, like the only math really is just like conversions and maybe like measurements to make sure like things are like fit properly. Sure, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think having an engineering background can be helpful uh, and just like knowing knowing what ideas you can come up with like uh like we took a class my freshman year that was a lot about like simple machines and stuff like that um and we had this book that had a bunch of different diagrams of simple machines in it like ramps and screws and stuff like that I, that and, wasn't cool i didn't do anything like that but like maybe like in our we have to take conceptual physics so not real physics but like still in physics, to do basically all you have to do is cheat because just during the pandemic, so, <laughs> so classes are all online. And you don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have any like simple machines, so I feel like I struggle with like how things move and like are able to be mechanized. What is the hardest class we've taken in university? And for me, I would actually say that it was probably my sketching class. Uh, like as a kid, I did a lot of art and like ceramics and stuff like that, but I never really did drawing or painting or anything like that. So going into college, there was this expectation that I could like communicate visually and have an idea and put it onto a piece of paper and show it to somebody else and they'd understand it, um, which was not a skill that I had going into going into college, to say the least. Were you expected to be able to draw when you joined your program? No, no, they didn't. They didn't want us to like hit the ground running and making, you know, beautiful art. But it was a, it was a fast paced class for sure. Um, and our professor, like this wonderful guy, Jim, who's like a fucking artist, like he was he was crazy good. And he would he had he sat at the front of the class and he had his big overhead projector and he would show us. I remember on the first day of school, he showed us a bunch of his uh, like client work that he had done in the industry. And he I think he did like some automotive stuff and he did a bunch of like furniture design uh, in like the seventies and eighties. And it was like gorgeous hand sketches. And I remember thinking that like, if, if that's the bar for doing product design, if I need to be like a visual artist in order to do product design, like I am screwed. Yeah, definitely. Like the qualifications, like being a designer is like the most important skill. Like I believe is like, you need to be able to communicate ideas fast and clearly through sketches. So like, yeah, that's big. the better you are, like the better you'll do in like ID. Yeah, I think one of the things that you mentioned was like communicating ideas quickly, which I didn't think was going to be uh, 
as big of a challenge as it was. And I didn't think that was going to be like the stress point that it is. Mm -hmm. It's not really about how beautiful your drawing is. Like, I think if you ask Mike or someone like whether he would ha rather have 10 or 15 or 100 like quick sketches of a bunch of different ideas or one beautiful rendering, he would always rather see 100 different ideas sketched out, you know, with scribbles because that's that's what's important at the end of the day. If you have to make a product that you have to sell, it doesn't really matter how good it looks. Definitely working at 52, I already see a big increase in my sketching skills because now I'm forced to do it every day. Mm -hmm. Like one of the things like they don't tell you about ID is like, it's something you want to do and you have to get good at it before you can actually work and do it. Yeah. Like I think feel like in other jobs, you can like learn something really fast on the fly or <clears throat> get good if you just like practice. But like if you want to do ID, you need to like have hours logged into drawing and like craft and everything. Sure. Sure. Like especially yeah. like um, in my free time, I, I have trouble just getting it done because like, it's like why am i drawing what am i going to do mm -hmm. but being here like we have something like to draw and there's like purpose to it yeah it's definitely helpful having like that uh external motivation of like a client with expectations and a, a senior designer with expectations you know it, like you said if i'm just sitting in my dorm room or sitting in my apartment trying to do sketches for homework that's due in a week it's really hard to find the motivation to actually do those sketches um whereas here I feel like there's kind of a day-to-day -day constant pressure in a good way to to get something done and that's helpful for me it does. naturally over time our sketches improve just because like it's muscle memory like you, mm -hmm. you can learn all like the technical like lingo and all of your like visual planes and your vanishing points and whatnot but like in the end of the day you can know all of it but if you can't like physically like draw a straight line with mm -hmm. like no ruler you're mm -hmm. kind of fucked yeah and do it reliably too yeah yeah one thing that i learned here that i have not used at school before and i'm excited to bring back to school is uh like the overlays that we've been doing a lot of times if we're ideating on something uh we'll do like a wireframe uh drawing on the computer and get the rough shape sketched out and then we'll put that piece of paper underneath a blank piece of paper and just do a bunch of sketches on that you know already set up perspective grid so that everything matches up and we can compare ideas to ideas. And it makes it a lot quicker and it makes it a lot easier to compare them. Yeah. I'm surprised you didn't learn that in school. Like all my professors are always like, or at least my like drawing professors are like, what, like if you're drawing like a tea kettle, for example, and you need to show scale, like one of the easiest ways to draw a hand of like someone holding it, pouring it into a cup. Mm. And my professors are always like, yeah, like good for you if you want to take four or five years to be able to, <laughs> to draw, draw a hand. <laughs> like really good but yeah. like what they do in the business is like take a picture of their own hand find one on the internet just print it out and use that as an underlay and sure. they can get like just the basic shape roughed in to, cause yeah like in the end of the day it doesn't matter how good you can draw a hand because we're designing products that's like, really interesting actually i feel like uh at my school it depends from person to person who i ask but uh i feel like there's a bit of a stigma of doing something like that, like the, the quick and easy way, like it's more efficient and it's probably a better way to do it. But there is always like those kids in your class that are really good at drawing hands or really good at drawing people. And if you tell them that you used an underlay for it, they'll give you a weird look. I feel like it's kind of the opposite here. Like if I tell someone that I used an underlay and I saved an hour doing it and I got like some efficiency back and I saved some time, like good on you. It's basically a trade school. Like you're learning a trade. There's different software and like like drawing you have to learn there's techniques to it you have to practice it there's certain software expectations they want you to know how to surface they want you to know how to you know use solidworks or rhino or whatever it is um, and if you haven't done that or if you haven't been in a position where someone expects you to know how to do that how are you going to know how to do that yeah i agree like getting an internship as a industrial diner design is like super important because like you're going to learn things that you're never going to learn in school yeah like at school they, they give us the materials how it's going to be manufactured and everything but here like we're like we have to do everything on our own here like obviously with the help mm -hmm. of mike and luke but like we're in those discussions of like how is this going to be manufactured how do we design around that yeah. How do we design around costs and whatnot? Yeah. What kind of materials are best suited that are in our price range? And you're not going to learn that in school because mm -hmm. they give you the supplies. That's a big one was price for me. Like when I was in school, no one ever talks about money, uh, like how much something's going to cost. We had a, a studio project like a year ago 
there was a shampoo bottle and the concept i came up with was like this multi-part thing with all these weird mechanisms and injection molded parts with all these overhangs and it probably would have been like a 70 dollar bottle of shampoo and my teachers loved it and my student like my peers loved it because uh, it looked cool and it was a neat presentation but in reality it was like kind of a terrible idea because it was just not effective yeah, and coming here and having to manage actual people's money has sort of put that into perspective for me yeah i think it's the same like at my school like they want us to like push our ideas to the, like limits and see like how like like, I feel like they grade us more on, like, design, whether or not it's good or bad. Like, obviously, it's good. Like, if we had, like, an ambient light project where we're, we're limited to, like, just laser-cut acrylic and a light bulb and rubber bands to hold it all together. Yeah. And it's just, like, how far can you push what you have to make a beautiful lamp? But at the end, at the end obviously, they said, oh, you all owe us $60 because we buy you the materials. Yeah. And we had, like, a weekend to do it. Yeah. So the question was, uh, has managing a budget made us better designers? And I, I, I'll speak to that real quick. I think it kind of helps and it hurts. There's there's some circumstances where, uh, where I think it kind of gets in the way. Like when you're when you're ideating, you want to throw as many ideas at a problem as you can, and some of them are going to be bad, and some of them are going to be good, and some of the bad ones will combine to make a good one. Um, and if you're like overly conscious about how much something's gonna cost or how logical it is, you can end up missing out on a lot of good ideas, I feel. So that's part of the value I feel like we bring to the table here is we don't really understand price perfectly and we don't really understand what is logical. So when we bring our solutions to a problem and we come into a design meeting, a lot of the times, at least personally, I feel like a lot of the times I'll have some kind of silly ideas and then maybe there's like a grain of truth to it. Maybe there's something good deep in there that that Mike or Luke can pull out and say, oh, actually, maybe there is a reasonable way to do this dumb thing you've suggested. But I feel like at least for me, maybe it's something that a, a better designer wouldn't have come up with in the first place. Yeah, I find it crazy how much like creative freedom we have here. Yeah, especially just like we only just finished our sophomore year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we're going to be juniors and like already we've touched so many products and like Mike and Luke ask me like what my opinion is on things that like I've done and what they've done and what you've done. Yeah. And like they take that to heart and they like we all discuss like the best possible solution together. Like, like we're interns, but we're not getting coffee because Sarah is already doing that. <laughs> but like we, we're actually like doing work and getting experience here, which yeah. I don't think you get like somewhere in like any other like ID. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. internship because like you'll probably be doing like grunt work and whatnot yeah i've been at plenty of jobs where i totally feel like i'm being babysat and uh, this is not one of them like on my first day in uh luke was giving me like some assignments and he i was kind of scared by it he he like looked at me and i'd been in the office for like 20 minutes he had just introduced me to everyone he was like here's the kitchen here's the bathroom here's your desk i was like oh i get my own desk and he told me that he had this injection molded part for a product that uh, needed some support material added to it because it wasn't strong enough and he like showed me what CAD software they use here and he said okay can you add the support material and then send it to me and I was like you want, you want me to do what and I I was like expecting him to walk me through it step by step and micromanage me and tell me exactly what I needed to do and how many millimeters wide each part should be and how tall to extrude everything but he just sort of trusted me to come up with something reasonable. And uh, and that was kind of scary and kind of cool. And I don't know if you had any experiences like that. Yeah, pretty much like the same thing. Like my first day, like I got here, same thing, introduced to everybody. Then I got, got in, briefed on like one of the products we're doing. I was given the CAD file and they just told me to hack it up and go crazy on it and see what I could do. Yeah. So I had like just a bunch of iterations of mm -hmm. this file and... I showed it to them at the end of the day and they were like, these three are good. Go forward with that. And then like right now it's, I think the the guy who's making that product just put a production order in it, in it and there's going to be like thousands of hundreds of products of that. And I touched it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool that something that you've come up with or something that you've influenced is going to be a real thing. Like up until this point, I've done some cool design work, I think, but 
it's all just like on my own hard drive, you know, yeah. it doesn't actually go anywhere once I finish the project. So even if it's something really, really small, like adding support material to somebody else's design, uh, it's, it's neat to know that like there's something out there that someone's going to interact with that I had some deciding power in. And it gives you the confidence that you need to, I think, go back to school and do some crazy projects and do something maybe not so cost effective or maybe kind of silly or stupid. Uh, being able to like confidently say that you can make good ideas and they are real things. That's kind of crazy to me still. Um, I mean, there's some, there's some very concrete things that I think I can take away, like underlays for my sketches and coming up with a high volume of ideas before I start to do high fidelity models of them. Um, but I think for me, like I said, one of the biggest parts is just like the confidence of being able to make a thing yeah definitely i think what, what i take away is just mostly like working with a client instead of like a professor because like most of the time they have no idea what they're talking about and you gotta <laughs> babysit them through like design <laughs> they, you you make like a bad design that's the one they pick because it's mm. like a different color or it's a little bit larger than all the other ones yeah you do sometimes have to curate what you show to the client you know if you have if you have 50 ideas maybe they only see 40 of them because 10 of them you don't personally like or are going to be too expensive or something like that that was interesting to see like i before this if i was doing a project in school and i did some work i would put it in the presentation like i wanted everybody to see what i was doing and i didn't really think about it as like you know whoever's seen the presentation obviously hasn't seen the presentation before and when i'm giving it to them they don't know what i've been working on and and that's my opportunity to like guide them through my thought process. So I was just throwing all my work at them and seeing what stuck. Uh, and it's been interesting working here where that doesn't really fly. Like if you throw everything at a client, they're not gonna know what to pick. And I think we've kind of experienced that a little bit recently where we have some projects where Ethan and I have come up with a lot of interesting ideas. And maybe maybe we've shown too many of them to some people who get a little bit, uh, a little bit of like option paralysis. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like it's definitely overwhelming because like we just have pages and pages of just like thumbnail sketches of like all the different directions they can take and like when they don't even know what they want to do. Yeah, yeah. Because like, like what you're saying, like we did a bunch of the sketches for this project and now she's going 180 and we'll take it from there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It does give me uh, like some newfound... I don't know what the word like. It makes me feel good that uh, when I go back to school, my my teachers, my clients aren't gonna like change the brief halfway through a project. That, that feels nice to know. Definitely, ID is a very fun career because basically we just get paid to draw and <laughs> mess around on our CAD softwares. I just stick around on the three D printer half the day, and no one notices that I'm gone. <laughs> but yeah, like once we like join the workforce i like bigger companies or whatever we do because like the range is limitless, limitless like furniture design product design automotive shoes fashion sure like there's just so many things you can branch out to and it's very mm -hmm. exciting to sink your teeth into something yeah i i toured some schools a few years ago when i was picking a college that had like different different sections of the product design industry sectioned off into their own major like i know at the university of cincinnati i think it was they have like a product design program and then completely separate from that or somewhat separate from that they have an automotive design program and that's not something i would have expected to see but it just goes to show you that there's like so much stuff that you can do and so much knowledge that we're trying to learn uh and put to use that you could really go anywhere with it so i'm excited to see what what looks interesting <laughs> by the end of my four years? I know I haven't had I haven't even had time to look at what I want to do because there's just like so many things you need to like do beforehand. Yeah, that's true. There's there is a lot to do before graduation. That's true. the The question was, do we have uh, final senior projects that we know about? Um, and you know, I, I I think there's like a structure that I've heard other people in my school talk about. You know, people a few years older but they generally keep it pretty private until the last moment. Like they, they, I think they want final projects and stuff like that, at least at the University of Minnesota, they want those projects to kind of be a surprise. 
like we did a freshman year portfolio review and uh, and this was like right at the beginning of the coronavirus and we got a prompt and we had two weeks to like ideate and do some models and come up with an idea and make a presentation and then pitch it um, and we ended up doing hand sanitizer dispensers um, just because it was pertinent and I remember like a lot of people were kind of angry about that like there's some people felt like there was no wiggle room in that prompt so it's interesting to see that uh, you know, they try to be withholding and they don't want you to know what you're going to be working on and I think that kind of matches the industry like here a lot of the times clients will be a little secretive about what they want um, and you have to and you have to figure it out as you go yeah i found my experience at wentworth our projects seem a lot cooler than yours we don't just design any like bottle caps or anything like we get to do cool stuff yeah and then like as the year like freshman year is basically just like the fundamentals like learning how to draw can you True. like manipulate bristol board into like a cube and like can get your craft skills up and, and as you? the years go on i kind of <laughs> gotta see i think yeah <laughs> But like I, I passed, I I made Dean's list somehow. Congratulations! But like as the years go on, like the projects get more personalized to you. What do you mean? Cause like, like basically like everyone was doing the same thing. Like we drew the same things, we like made the same cubes and all the tetrahedrons. Mm -hmm. Then like the end of freshman year, like our first like big design class was or not class, our pre project was to design a bar of soap for a specific user. A bar of soap. Yeah, a bar of soap. So like we all made like persona boards of like who we wanted to do, like people did their friends, this made sure. up celebrities, just random people. I had a metalhead named Sludge and I made the the soap based for the metalhead. Uh -huh. And like unfortunately COVID uh, cut it short because we were, originally we were gonna like die cast it and like- Are you gonna actually make it? We would have ha had actual bars of soap at the end of That's the- That's pretty cool. Year, but we didn't do it was it this was like a form study project yeah form study like i feel like it was just we used like room of plastiline which is a clay so it's just like a new material we got to play with mm -hmm. and it's just like all right we learned all the basics can we design something that will fit like this wide audience of people that you picked this, this wide audience of metalheads yeah like the ones that use soap <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's interesting. I'm, I am jealous of projects like that. I feel like a lot of our projects fell a little bit more on the like mechanical engineering side of things. Like we did a we did a spray bottle project this past semester, and I spent like weeks working on the internal mechanism for the spray bottle, which kind of felt like a waste of time. Like someone's already made that. We already have spray bottles. Why do I need to be making CAD models of a, you know, a plunger and a trigger and a gear? Like, can't we just, uh, can't we just buy that item stock? Yeah. And I, I do, I do kind of wish that I got to do more like soap bar projects where we just really focus on aesthetics. Yeah, like aesthetics. Uh, we had, obviously we had to think about like what would be in the soap and everything too. Mm. We also had like more fun projects, like we like the ambient light, like the acrylic and everything. Like that's sitting in my hanging from my bedroom right now because like yeah, it was just fun and everyone's lamps. Not everybody's lamps were good, but like mm -hmm. there's like a select few that were really nice, mm -hmm. especially with like blue underglows and everything. Did you get to choose the color of the light? They could have done that better. They, yeah. they basically just like bunch of they bought a bunch of colors mm. that was like first come first serve. So you weren't there at the right time you just got whatever color yeah but that's like, that that sucks that sucks not as not as bad as ours though we had a lamp project where we all got the same like disgusting bluish leds it was like the worst color white you've ever seen and we did a similar lamp project um it was like for a for a dfm class a design for manufacturer class uh, and we had to, the project was you make this lamp and you make all the component parts and you make a bunch of extras and you give the part pile to one of your classmates for like the final presentation along with like an Ikea style instruction set and they have to assemble it and then grade you on how good the tolerances were and how easy it was to put together and how understandable the instructions were. And it was it was a cool project but all the lamps looked like shit <laughs> like they and they were beautiful lamps but the, the just the leds that we used were disgusting i hated it so i have mine in my room and i never turn it on 
Yeah. Mine's on. Do you have to break down like, the person that would be ideal for the career or degree that you're in? What would that person be? Yeah, definitely. If you want to be an industrial designer, like, you have to be, like, passionate and driven. It's not just, like, a job you can come and do. Mm-hmm. Because, like... Mm-hmm just like before you even work like we said before you you gotta put hours and hours in drawing and learning different softwares that you can sure. learn, expand on i think that's kind of true to some degree in like every profession mm-hmm. a little bit and what you know one thing that that's important i think for me is like curiosity like yeah. especially at 52 launch you know on monday we'll be working on a, a footwear project and on tuesday we'll be working on a furniture design project and on Wednesday we'll be doing CAD models for a, you know a, a, a toy and obviously you're not going to be able to learn all of those skills in college uh, and at a certain point you're just going to have to be like frantically googling stuff and I think curiosity and and a little bit of like just yeah. a, just a little bit of googling skill. I think that's what it takes. Just looking up looking up all the stuff you don't know and being willing to admit that you don't know it and being excited to find a solution to it. And obviously you got to love it cuz like if you're spending 8 hours just drawing yeah. flip flops, you got to love it. Not everyone's going to be down for that, especially like we're not going to make crazy amount of money unless we rob a bank, I guess. But <laughs> like it, it's like we will make a comfortable living and we actually like do something fun like all my professors are just giant kids that's true they just that is true draw and model milled and just like make these quacky contraptions that mm-hmm. like like on cad like he, one of my professors just makes like crazy robots all the time and they're all so sick and detailed does he build them he models them in cad so like they're just like crazy like lights real life renderings i i know like for like if you're in his cad class like they did like a mini scale about with like the thug bots we just made like a little robot and they all like 3d printed them out and they like they all look super cool that's cool uh we were just asked to explain the terms cad and render and i'm assuming elaborate on that (laughs) um so uh cad is computer assisted computer automated design Uh, and then a render is when you take that cad file which is just a 3d model a bunch of points in space and lines and faces between them and you put it into a software usually key shot is what we use professionally uh, and you add a bunch of lighting to it and you can change camera settings and colors and materials and textures like that so a lot of like a lot of stuff you'll see on instagram or um, like like those really flashy ads for the ps5 when it was first dropping i think a lot of those were probably key shot renders uh, rather than actual photographs. Most of the time, you can't even... It's like they're done right. You cannot tell yeah, whether it's yeah. real or photograph. Mm-hmm. I, f- I follow a Instagram account uh, that I can't remember the name of exactly. It's like like the Kaiza or something. And he's, a, he's like an automotive 3D model and render guy. But I didn't read his bio very carefully when I first started following him. And it wasn't until like two weeks ago that I realized pretty much everything he posts is a render. Like they all look like photographs and they're cars. They're like big big detailed things in the real world with backgrounds and lighting and uh and i just he he had me fooled i didn't realize they were all renders so there's definitely a skill to it oh yeah that i do not yet have <laughs> if you're gonna cat something you have to be able to render that also or else you just got like a gray like blob of whatever you've been working on yeah because yeah. like obviously like we work on them like interchangeably like i know like future and the professions like you can like specialize in just doing like renders where someone will send you like their mm-hmm. model you just like an hour and hours getting it to be as lifelike as you can but i feel like since you like do them both at the same time your skill grows at both of them depending like if you take the time to like work on each of them like yeah individually and i think they kind of influence each other too like if you want a better render you're gonna need a better cad model like if you want something to look super detailed and accurate then you need to have all the screws and all the parting lines and you know detailed geometry on there that you need to know how to model if you want it to appear in your render um but i don't know i don't know if you agree with me one thing that surprised me about coming to 52 launch was that a lot of the times that's just not necessary like if you're gonna spend a week making a perfect render of a product like 
you've wasted a week. Like if you have a, a model that's good enough and you have a render that's good enough, you can get on to the next thing and you can start, you know, getting an FA sample or you can start manufacturing or you can send it to a client. Um, whereas like in school, I feel like there's this ethos of like, all your reflections have to be perfect and everything has to line up. And if, you know, if you don't throw it into Photoshop to post-process it, your professors are going to notice or something like that. When in reality, I almost feel more embarrassed if I have something that's like really nice looking because it proves that I put way too much time into it. I think it's definitely one of those, like you gotta know the rules before you can just like break them. Like you have to be mm. able to like get all your shadows and lighting right before you can just like add your base core shadow and have it still look just as good. Yeah. It's like one of like my one of my drawing teachers would say like he knew this guy who you give him like like a time of day and he'll make a rendering of like that shadow at that time. Hmm. But he's like, you don't need to do that. Like if you can just draw like a simple shadow, that's like all you have to, all you have to do is convey like an idea. Yeah. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I had this awesome. moment an hour ago where we were in the conference room and uh, Mike, one of the senior designers was explaining to me uh, the shape of this part that he wanted me to 3D model. And, um, and he, he had a, like a piece of paper like this and a pen and he drew it in like 15, 20 seconds. And I understood what he was talking about. And then, and then I had a question for him. So I drew my own little version of it in chicken scratch and he just didn't understand what I was talking about. And I was like, no, 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 you see the, this, this connects here and, and you just kind of do this. And I was drawing lines and circling things frantically. And, and I think that that's kind of the real skill is not how beautiful can you make it, but how accurate and quick and effective can you make it? So I was impressed by that. And I think I have a lot to learn in that department. I don't know if you feel the same way. Oh, definitely. Like, I need at least 20 minutes to get, like, at least, like, a decent underlay that's in perspective before I can just sketch on a napkin, like, a, an idea that makes sense to someone who may not have, like, the same 3D visualization skills that we do. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Are communication skills as important as design skills? I feel like that depends. Because I feel like if you make a really good design, they can see it and understand it. But at the same time, you have to be able to sell your idea to someone who might not understand it. Like you need to be able to convey what it is. Or if they like ask questions, like if you make it like mahogany wood and they're like, why can't it be aluminum? You got to be ready to explain like the pros and cons of yeah. like, either or. Yeah, that's true. You do need to kind of think on your feet like that. You know, if you have a, if you have a nice design um, and the client doesn't understand it or they want something slightly different, and you were like, you went in heart set on this idea and you don't have the communication skills to like work around whatever question they have. Yeah. I remember yeah. like the first time, like my first like couple days here, like we were kind of project. I did a bunch of sketches and they invited me to like the client meeting because that's where you'll learn. Then like the slides came up that like I drew on and Mike's like, Oh yeah, Ethan, you talk about these. I was like, what the fuck? I yep. what? Yep. <laughs> and yeah, I know exactly I, what meeting you're talking about. <laughs> Same thing happened to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh -huh. like they don't tell you like beforehand that you're gonna talk about your own design. So uh -huh. then you gotta like on the spot sell your idea to some client over the screen and you're like fumbling and like yeah. your work next to Mike or Luke's is like already like uh -huh. so far <laughs> and then you're like struggling and uh -huh. then you gotta freeze and like Mike has to like finally take over and like <laughs> communicate your own designs to yeah, that's like, the so client. True. That's so true. Yeah, and, and at school, when you get into that situation, you could just sort of throw out some buzzwords and people will nod their head and then you'll move on. And you could say, oh, I'll fill it this and bezel that and CAD and render and reflection and shadow. Thank you very much. And that's like good enough. You can't but, say that to a client though. Yeah, yeah. And the clients who don't have, a, you know, maybe don't have a design background or who I don't have the experience with, you know, whatever it is you're working on. You have to explain it to them in like human English. And that's so much harder. It's so much harder. Favorite part about interning here? It's definitely like the creative freedom and that we actually get to do work. Yeah. Instead of coffee runs. Yeah. One thing I really like uh, is that everybody, everybody has a role and everybody's really good at that role and everybody's really good at communicating what that role is like like when i was in school our professors always sort of told us and these are like big industry guys they always told us 
uh, that like the engineers are kind of your worst enemy and the product designer's job is to come up with something cool and the engineer's job is to tell you why it doesn't work or something like that. And coming in to 52 launch, I was sort of expecting a similar, a similar situation where, you know, maybe I would have some cool ideas and somebody else wouldn't like them or I would have some cool ideas and other people, I don't know. I, I was just worried. I was worried. And it's really cool to see that everyone here has the exact same goal. It's like, okay, let's come up with something cool and let's make it real. And everywhere you go, you know, you could walk around the office and look over someone's shoulder and they're working on the same project that you were working on a week ago. And they're trying to make it look just as good as you want it to look. And for me, just sort of the whole like communal atmosphere of like, let's do this thing. Let's do it right. Let's make it cool. That's, that's really exciting to me. Definitely just like the amount of freedom you have and just like all your skills just get boosted from like working here. Yeah, huge stat boost. Huge mm -hmm. stat boost. Because like, we're, we're, I, I'd say like we're basically on our own when we when we design something, then like we have our little design meetings with Mike and Luke and then if we get like our little feedbacks, then mm -hmm. like not, not a lot, but like enough that are just like valid points that yeah. we can learn from. Yeah, I've, I've personally learned a big skill which is like knowing what questions to ask like when when you get a brief from one of the other designers they'll they'll explain it in language that i'm sure they think is enough to explain what they want you to do but a lot of the times it's it like there's some loss in the communication or you don't understand exactly what they're saying and i think six months ago i would have just sort of nodded my head and then walked back to my desk and sat down and been confused for the rest of the day uh, whereas I'm totally learning a, that it's okay to ask questions and B what questions you should ask to get the responses that you want to figure out the information that you need. Like, uh, I probably spent six hours on my first, my first project was adding support to that, to that piece of plastic that probably took me 10 times longer than it needed to take. And I think if from the bat I had just asked, okay, how wide do you want it? How tall do you want it? What color do you want it or whatever? I could have been done in 20 minutes. And now I feel like I have a little bit more of that skill.